Today we're going to connect energy and momentum. Um, and to do that, we're going to start by looking back at a problem that you've already done, which is the Batman problem. It was the first problem that we did when we did energy after the roller coaster problem. So here goes. This is a continuation of that. First, I want to remind you about the conservation of energy portion of that problem. So here is that situation. We had Batman up on the roof about to swing down and capture the crook. Uh, Batman's going to swing down from rest from a height of 20 meters and the crook is running out of the building at 8 meters per second. And here are their masses. So here goes. Our energy analysis looked like this. We had at the top Batman had gravitational potential energy of 20,000 joules which meant that his total energy, since he was stationary there, was 20,000 joules. By the time he swung down to the bottom, his potential energy had dropped to zero, and so all of his energy, all of the total energy, which had to be the same by conservation of energy, had turned into kinetic energy. This allowed us to figure out Batman's speed when he got to the bottom, and it was 20 meters per second. So here is that. That's part of what you did for, I suppose it was problem number nine in your workbook related to energy. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not problem nine related to energy. This is now problem number nine related to momentum, which you had already done this top part before. And then you get down into the momentum stuff here. So here's the before. The before situation is that Batman, before colliding with the crook, is uh, with his mass of 100 kilograms going at 20 meters per second, and the crook with a mass of 80 is going 8. And then after the collision, this is a coupling because Batman catches the crook and moves forward with him. Um, the mass is combined. It's now 180 kilograms, and we're supposed to find out the final speed and we end up with 14.6 repeating meters per second for their final speed. This is our first combination of energy and momentum situation that you've already done on your last homework assignment which was the momentum assignment. If we were to map out the concepts here we would say that we first dealt with conservation of energy then that led to an interaction where we had to use conservation momentum. Normally we would have done this at school with a much smaller apparatus, but um, I don't have the option right now. So uh, I've set up a swing with some weights underneath it. There's 40 pounds of weight there. And my son is going to run and jump onto the swing and based on how far it rises, we're going to calculate how fast he was going. That's the goal. Now we're going to talk about a famous object in uh, introductory physics classes. Uh, it's called the ballistic pendulum. And it looks about like this. This is another energy and momentum combination. Um, here we're going to have some amount of momentum headed into an interaction which is going to cause us to convert our energy from one type to another. Um, this is the design of the ballistic pendulum that I have at school that I did not have access to so I couldn't do the experiment with it. Um, it would have used our projectile launcher. We would have shot the ball out of it at some particular speed and uh, so the ball would have all of the momentum in this case and be headed toward this catcher that would be hanging from a rod. Um, the before the interaction momentum is all in the ball and the after the interaction momentum is the ball gets caught by the catcher and the catcher takes off and moves to the right in this picture. After the catcher catches the ball, it's embedded in it as you can see here, and then the two together have kinetic energy. Because these strings are tied to a rod on the one that I have at school, 
the entire catcher apparatus swings upward and converts its kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy. So it trades in its speed at this position for height at this position where it comes to a stop. Because I don't have access to our ballistic pendulum, because it's at school, uh, I had to improvise. So here's what I came up with. Um, we have a swing set in my backyard, and so I'm going to have this makeshift uh, ballistic pendulum, which is my son is going to run and be the cannonball here, and he's going to run and jump onto a swing that's then going to swing up into the air. So here is the diagram that's exactly like what's above, but now my child is the ball with some speed, which we don't know. He's going to run and jump onto the swing. In the before case for this interaction between the child and the swing, he has all the momentum. He's going to jump onto the swing, and the interaction takes place here, where after the child and swing together are moving with some speed, and then swing upward and rise some height that we're going to measure in our next videos. Uh, it's a momentum situation from before to after and then once he has jumped onto the swing his kinetic energy with the swing will turn into gravitational potential energy and it will cause him to rise from the height that he started at to wherever he ends up. Before we can look at the next video which is going to be the actual slow motion capture of what he did, uh, we need to know that his mass is 32 kilograms. He's about 70 pounds now. Uh, and I put weights on the swing. And so I put two 20 pound weights on the swing. So the mass of the swing is going to be 18 kilograms. Uh, when you look at the next segment, you should try to see what the height that the weights were at is at the bottom before he jumps onto the swings and then what height does that weight rise to when it gets to its highest point after he's jumped on. Hopefully you were able to see, roughly at least, uh, what height the swing weight was at before and after he had jumped onto it. Uh, in case you didn't, and hopefully you agree with these numbers, but I looked at it in slow-mo and I thought that the weight was at about 34 centimeters when it was at the bottom of its swing and it rose up to a height of 65 centimeters or so at the top. We're going to use those numbers as our heights when we do our energy analysis. So here we go working out a problem basically where we're connecting energy and momentum. We're going to start here. The first thing that we can know in this situation is that when my son got to the top of his swing, he had gravitational potential energy that was his mass combined with the swing's mass times gravity times the height that he was at in meters. This means that the system in this case had a total energy of 325 joules at that location. The next thing that we can know is that because of conservation of energy the system must have had a total energy of 325 joules 
before it rose up to its highest height. When it was at the bottom, it had the mass times gravity times a height of 0.34 meters, which means 170 joules of gravitational potential energy, when he had just jumped onto the swing and it was still suspended above the ground. The difference between the total and gravitational potential energies must be the kinetic energy, so we get 155 joules. If we continue with this, we can know that at the instant that he jumped onto the swing, his and the swing's velocity must have been almost two and a half meters per second. And the way that we know this is because this 155 joules of kinetic energy is a result of his mass and the swing's mass moving at whatever speed they were. So here that is worked out, and we end up with a speed for the coupled child and swing of two and a half meters per second. The speed of about two and a half meters per second after coupling is the end of what we can calculate by analyzing the energy in the situation. Now we're going to look at the interaction portion or phase of what was going on by calculating momentum. So there's an after momentum that we know first actually and a before momentum for this interaction. The after momentum is that my son and the swing with the weights on it with their mass of 50 had a velocity of 2.49. That means that the momentum after the coupling was 124 and a half. But because momentum is conserved, the momentum before the coupling has to match that. And before the coupling, we had the child moving at some unknown speed, and we had the swing sitting still. So in the before, the momentum is the mass of the child times the speed of the child plus the mass of the swing times the speed of the swing. These are filled in here. Child's mass is 32. We don't know the speed of the child. The swing's mass is 18 and it was stationary before he jumped onto it. So we can conclude that the momentum before being equal to the momentum after means that his speed while he was running must have been 3.89 meters per second. This is reasonable if we put it in other units that maybe you're more familiar with you probably would agree that it's reasonable that my son might have been running about nine miles an hour before he jumped onto that swing.